Hi, I'm Darnell with Wayland Wayland Recipes, and this is my review of the Oster Extra Large Digital Air Fry Oven. So let's go ahead and get it unboxed. Now that everything's been unboxed, let me show you the accessories. Basically, they give you a manual here. No like recipe book or anything like that. Got a big bake pan there. So here that is. There's a wire rack. The wire rack has hooks underneath, so you could put the bake pan up under there. Yeah, you can slide it under there to like catch drippings if you want to put something on the wire rack that way. Or of course you can put the wire rack on a lower rack level with this air fry rack up above and catch your drippings with a big pan on top of that wire rack. So some options there. One other thing, there's a a drip pan, drip pan down down bottom here. And the drip pan can also be put up on other levels as a cookie sheet. They say that the drip pan also doubles as a cookie sheet, so that's interesting. Now this is the power plug. It's a two-prong polarized plug and the power cord is uh, not very long. This is basically as long as it goes. And they say that it's a 1700 watt cooker. So very large cooker that doesn't top out at like the max of about 1800 watts. It's a little below. So it's going to be interesting seeing how this does in test and such because it's a very large cooker and it's 1700 watts, but we'll see how it goes. They say that the dimensions are 24 inches in length, 19.3 inches in width, and 16 inches in height. We will do independent measures to see what we get. But they say as far as capacity, it can fit up to two large pizzas, two full chickens is what they say, or three 10.5 by 13 inch baking pans. And so basically they're saying that because it's so large, you can cook your main dishes and your sides simultaneously. They said that the weight of the cooker is 23.3 pounds. Moving it around, it seems like it's much lighter than that. So I don't know if that's the 23.3 in the box. And even in the box, it seemed pretty light. But if it's 23.3 pounds, it doesn't, I guess it, I guess it is 23.3. I guess it seemed kind of light to me, but I guess it is 23.3 pounds. Basically, they say that the cooking time is up to 90 minutes. We will do a check on that, but they say that's where the cooking time ends out at. And we'll also do a check of the temperature ranges later as well. So now I'm going to basically give you a view around the cooker. So you can see how it looks all the way around. You see the front, you see up top, it's got some air vents there. Around the side, we got some air. Around the other side, we got some air. Around the back, let's see if I can get it turned around. You see, it's got a hump, but it's not a very large hump. It's a very shallow hump, but there is a hump in the back there. And it looks like there's a little bit of air vent on the side and the top there. So that's your look all the way around the cooker. So now I want to give you a close-up view of the cooker. Over here we've got the touch pad that we'll get into in detail later. And opening the cooker up, here's the drip pan that I told you, drip pan that I told you doubles as a cookie sheet. So you can like put it up on the middle rack level and cook your cookies on the cookie sheet. That's a pretty interesting story. For the uh, excess noise though. Down bottom we've got one two heating elements a large cooker just two heating elements on the bottom that's interesting. Over here to the left we have the air fry fan on the side. Up top here we've got the ambient probe right there up top and then up higher here all we have is two heating elements on top. That's all. So, not a lot, not a lot of heating elements at all, and uh, 
the fan on the side. It'll be interesting to see how this cooker performs, but that's your close-up view. Okay, so now I have the Oster Extra Large Digital Air Fry Oven next to the Oster French Door Digital Air Fry Oven, which is also pretty large in its own right. So you see that together you have to do a pretty wide angle shot just to get them both in view. And so I want to do some quick measurements of the two for comparison's sake. So I'll do, uh, I guess, top to bottom first. Now we see basically top to bottom the one on the right, the extra large one without the French door is just a tad taller. The French door one is just under 13 inches but the one that is on the right, the extra large, it's just under 13 inches by just a slight tad less so just a smidge taller I mean not even really noticeably taller um, very well unless you're looking very closely now when I go across the top and I include the hump in the back sorry about that when I include the hump in the back up to the handles the end of the handles I'm looking at about 19 inches on the French door on the non French door with its smaller hump up to the handle I'm looking at 17 inches, so a couple inches less due to the smaller hump here. And I'm going to go across the top. We see about 21 and a half inches there across the top, 21 and a half inches on the French door version. Now across the top on the extra large without the French doors, we're looking at about 21 and a half there as well. So about 20 and a half there. And about about 21 and a half, about even across. That's pretty interesting. So I'm going to open up the French door one, and I'm going to, including the hump in the back, do a front to back look. And I'm looking at 16 and a half inches front to back. When I go inside of the one without the French door, the extra large, and I do front to back with its smaller hump. I am looking at just 14 inches. So you definitely, because of the large hump in the back, you've got more room in the French door one. Now I'm going to do, let's see, let me close this one up and I'll go across the bottom so that we get a measurement across the bottom here. Now there's 16 inches there across the bottom. That's 16 inches on the French door. Go across the bottom on the extra large without, without French doors. We're also looking at 16 inches. So even there across, when I look at the height inside, just from the lowest interior point up to the highest interior point, I'm looking at just under 10 inches, about nine and three quarter inches. Yeah, it's about nine and three quarter inches there. Do the same for the one without the French doors. It looks like it is about the same, about nine and three quarter. So the only difference is the inside front to back because this one has the big hump. But otherwise, they're pretty much equals in size in a lot of ways. You do have to remember, and I have a full review of the French door in my, uh, well, here on this channel, I have a full review of the French door one so there's like probably like 800 videos on this channel or so at this point and so basically there's reviews of all types of cookers including this one and this one has a bit more features we'll be going through the features on this extra large without the French doors in a bit but the French door one has more features that's something to keep in mind and you can watch that full review for more details now I want to show you the bake pans that come with each of these just for sizing comparison sake they're basically the same pan the exact same pan so they give you the same pan for each but I want to show you if you use like a 13 inch sorry about that 13 inch bake pan with no handles you can fit that in there with no problem close it on up 
inside of this one you can as well fit it in there no problem now I'm going to try a 13 inch bake pan with handles so this is a 13 inch bake pan with handles we can put that in to the French door no problem we can have our 13 inch pan and our handles too and we can do the same over here with this one so both of them can hold your large pans with no problem so now I have the Oster extra large air fry oven next to the Ninja Foodi XL Pro air fry oven I want to mention that I do have a full review of the Ninja Foodi XL Pro air fry oven here on this channel as well with full measurements of it but I will say that front to back the Ninja Foodi is bigger as far as size front to back because it has a big hump in the back however you cannot fit as much in this because the front to back space that you have for use is about 12 inches in this particular cooker and I have one of the very first ones that came off their line where they used to have a fan guard on them they don't have fan guards on them anymore and you can't add one because they decided not to put them in and not to have the parts in to add a fan guard so this one you can only fit about 12 inches front to back inside of it whereas with this one as we measured we see we could hold a little more it's just the internals here even though it's got a larger back front to back profile the internals and all the fans is on the back and so it just takes up a lot more room on the back of this cooker is how things work but you see that it's just a just a tad taller than the Oster although the side to side profile is slimmer on the Ninja Foodi than the Oster and I want to show you one key difference difference with the Ninja Foodi from the Oster although both can hold a 13 inch bake pan with no handles if you have a 13 inch bake pan with handles this is where the difference comes in you can't get that into the Ninja and nothing in this video is sponsored that's why I can that's why I have the liberty to show you a lot of different things that you might not see other places nothing sponsored here and I don't get anything from anyone I buy it myself so that's a big difference with the Ninja Foodi as far as size from the Oster to consider in that regard okay so they say that you can hold two full-size chickens in this cooker I'm not going to cook them in this video because they're both frozen but I've got two five pound chickens and I just want to see how they fit side by side in the cooker so we put both of them in and it looks like I mean they're frozen so I can't move them around much it looks like they fit kind of close together I guess if you trust them you know you probably can tighten them up and maybe get a little gap of space in between them but seems like that would be a little tough you have to, you know trust them pretty tight but it looks like two chickens can fit two five pounders can fit they're going to be a little close though but they can fit so now I'm going to do an initial plug-in of the cooker here so got to move it over to get it closer to the plug because this cord is short and I want to plug it in over here on the side so there I got it plugged in and things gave a little bit of a beep, a little flash but that's what you get when you do the initial plug-in so I'm just kind of positioning it on my counter here so now that I've got it plugged in I can set the clock up so what you do is you hit clock and with hitting clock I have to go up to hours so I'm going up to time and then I hit clock again to do minutes and it's about 153, 154 where I'm at so doing that and hit clock again and so the clock is set and with that I'm going to real quick I want to check toast because on the French door if you remember the view of that it didn't show time it just showed a number and I had to basically literally uh, track the time to see how long a certain toast level would take so I'm just hitting toast and we see just like the French door it shows like four or you can change the different levels but when you hit start let's see yeah it's just like the French door one canceling that basically with toast it's not going to tell you 
how long it's cooking toast so it's not going to do like if your cook is already hot it's not going to know that it's already hot and cook at a slightly shorter amount of time because the cook is already hot and compensate and things like that and it doesn't tell you how long the cook goes for toast for those different number settings but if you look at my 30 day review for the French door Oster air fry oven in the 30 day review I give details of times for like maybe like one through five or so I, I forget but I timed a lot of them to like the, about the exact second and I gave details in the 30 day review for the French door one so I also wanted to show you if you want to change the settings from Fahrenheit to Celsius on a temperature because like if we hit bake it's like 350 Fahrenheit but I think if you hit the I think it's up or down temp for a few seconds let's see yeah see it, it does this thing where it says now I'm in I'm in Celsius mode so I'm gonna I think you can do either up or down but I'm gonna hold the up one for a few seconds go back to Fahrenheit and that's how you switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius for your temperature readings So now I've got my iGrill 2 temperature probe on the middle rack level. If you are interested in the iGrill 2 for measuring temperature of foods or ambient temperature and such, you can see the Amazon referral link, well, the link to my Amazon shop, and then look in the temperature section, and there's a link in there for the iGrill 2 if that's something that interests you. Now, closing on up and going to do a temperature test, and we see the current internal temperature and I'm going to hit bake and the temperature defaults to 350 I'm just going to check how low it goes for low temperature there's no dehydrate on this cooker so I think 200 degrees is as low as it'll go and going up to the max the max is 450 so we'll leave it at the 450 max I've got it on uh, did I do air fry? I think I did air fry. No, I did I did bake. So air fry, same thing with air fry. Lowest is 200, highest is 450. I'm going to do air fry for this test. 450 for time, I'm going to up to 30 minutes. So we'll see how things do. It has a preheat, and we'll see how it measures up through the preheat and beyond. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And so it's doing its preheat and we'll see how things do. Alright, we've got things finished with preheating. Now when it's done preheating you're supposed to hit start after you've put your food in of course and it starts counting down. The air fry fan starts running. No fan was running during the preheat. Temperature read is currently 481 degrees Fahrenheit looks like it's going down just a little bit I don't know if that's the effect of the fan or it letting off the gas a little bit on the heat but uh, electric cooker but no gas in the cooker but anyway it's uh, now it's at 469 so we'll just see how the temperature adjusts for like maybe 10 minutes or so and let it just keep running so now the cooker's been going for not even two minutes we're at 400 500 degrees Fahrenheit so we'll see how things keep moving here all right so things have been going for 10 minutes and we see that the temperature has been holding at a steady 495 degrees Fahrenheit so we see when we're on air fry 450 we really get according to the ambient probe here about about 500 nearly 500 degrees Fahrenheit now I want to do some feeling around the cooker while it's running the hot I mean the, the top it feels hot side here it's kinda of hot I don't want to keep my hand there I can touch it but I don't want to keep it there on this side it's about the same thing it's kinda of hot there front I, I don't even want to try touching that the back yeah the back is hot you know, I just tapped it for a second, it's hot. So this cooker, it, it's hot all the way around is all I can say. Down bottom here, it's not like the countertop is burning or anything. The countertop is not feeling hot, which is good. 
and I just want to check if I make like changes on the fly you can like adjust temperature down or up on the fly and it'll do that for you you can change time on the fly something they do point out is if you're going up in temperature it may go into a preheat mode when you're changing temperature like I go down it's not going to go into a preheat because I'm going down it's already pretty hot but if it was already I guess a cooler temperature and I go up then it's going to go likely into a preheat to try and preheat up to that higher temperature now I will say when you open the door you're not going to get an auto pause when you open the door there's no auto pause door if you hit cancel one time it ends the cook it doesn't do like the French door with the French door version of this large cooker if you hit cancel it goes into a pause but with this uh, basically this extra large one you hit cancel and it cooks the cook ends so there is no pause feature on this cooker that I'm able to find so like if I just hit it again and it doesn't even remember what I had before it doesn't even remember the cook settings I had before so it realizes it's already at the temperature but I can't I can't do a pause. I don't have a way to pause the cook. So this cooker has no means to pause a cook at all. I, I hit cancel twice because I'm used to hitting cancel twice on the French door one. But you hit cancel once, your cook is done. And so that's something to keep in mind when you're using this cooker. Okay, so now I'm going to go over the different functions of the cooker. But I wanted to show you how you can skip preheat. So let's say I was on air fry and I was up to 450 we can leave the time where you know it's default and so I hit start and it starts preheating if I want to skip preheat I can hit start a second time and it automatically skips that preheat so anytime you want to skip preheat just hit start a second time if you don't want to preheat even though a preheat is advised for your best cooking experience just so you know so something else I wanted to mention is that preheat is built in on things like uh, everything except toast I believe and maybe warm I think everything else is going to give you a uh, preheat I'm pretty sure so I won't go through each one well maybe broil won't either so broil yeah broil is not going to give you a preheat so you're going to get a preheat on everything except toast broil and I don't think warmer is going to give you a preheat either I don't think so that's just something to keep in mind about uh, you know most functions are going to have preheat also the ways to skip the preheat if you want to skip the preheat now I'm going to basically go into some more detail about each function with uh, the bake function you basically can use that with the middle rack position and now I'm going to go into toast with toast you basically would use the middle rack position also with toast with the broil where's the broil button so there's broil basically broil you would use the top rack position with warm warm you basically will use the bottom rack position with warm with the air fry the air fry you're basically going to use the middle rack position with the air fry I've already talked to you about if you want to use a drip pan underneath and different ways you can configure that with roast you're going to use the bottom rack position for roast so keep that in mind because you're going to have big stuff in there with pizza you're going to use the middle rack position with the pizza function so basically that tells you everything that you need to know about the different functions okay something that I tested earlier was cook time min and maximum just to confirm that so I'm just hitting bake and going down to the minimum time it's gonna of course be one minute but just gonna do it anyway so minimum of one minute going up to the maximum amount of time see if it tops out at 90 minutes as I mentioned earlier just to confirm yeah so tops out at 90 minutes I think roast probably gonna be the same thing gonna to top out probably at 90 yeah so 
90 minutes is the most you get with this cooker as far as your cooking time. Okay, so I started a toast test. I've got a couple slices of my almond flour whole wheat bread in there on the middle rack level. I'm using the default uh, toast setting, which is four, and just going to let it basically toast, and we'll see how it does on the four setting. I do recall with the French door one, the setting I think even on the initial default was taking so long and heating the bread so much that I stopped it early. But, like I said, I have the times that were I captured in the 30-day review for that cooker. They may be the same with this one, but I'm going to go ahead and let it cook on four, and we'll see how it does for basically toasting. Almond flour whole wheat bread does take a little bit long, well, not a little bit, but a good bit more time and heat to get a toast on than regular white bread. So anything that we see from the default toasting on four with this bread, it's probably going to be a lot heavier for your store-bought bread if that's the type of thing that you're into. Alright, the toast is finished. I am glad that it beeped a couple times, then it stopped beeping. I know the French door one would beep without end until you hit the cancel. And when I did some other, I guess, testing and such earlier, it was beeping, like when I did the burn-off, it was beeping for a long time after that I believe but we see on the fourth setting what we get is kind of a middle tone toasting on both sides which is not too bad same for that slice there so there you go and again for toast times you can see the 30 day 30 day review for the French door version where I captured a lot of that probably about the same for this version here and so that's your toast test. Okay, I'm mixing together some cookie dough for my lemon almond flour cookies. I'll flash the uh, recipe on the screen for a quick moment. I've done detailed cooks of this in some other videos, but while I'm getting things mixed together and set out on the pan, I'm going to start preheating the cooker. So I'm going to leave it at 350. And for cooking time, I'm going to bring it down to 30 minutes of cooking time. I'm going to hit start, let it go ahead and preheat while I finish getting things ready. Alright, looks like the preheat is done. It's just getting a little bit more in here. And I do want to mention up front, I'm not going to spin the rack. I'm going to let it cook the full time without a spin because I want to see what happens to the stuff in the back. Will the stuff in the back cook more than the stuff in the front? We're going to see for sure. And I'm going to turn the light on so you can see better. Alright, so now you probably can see things as they cook, but we'll go ahead and let things commence. Alright, so let them go for the full 20 minutes, and so we're going to get in here and see what's going on now. Cancel to stop that annoying beeping. I don't know of a way to stop that beeping. But here's our finished product. The back did get a bit more of a cooking than the front. So I think things are done though. So I'm going to take them on out, but you do want to keep in mind to spin. Some cookies you don't have to spin, but this one you do. Alright, so giving the cookies some time to cool down, so I'm going to take this one here, it was on the front row, and let's have a look at it, you can see the bottom and the top, I'm going to get one from the back row as well, we'll take this one from the back row, so you see the top, you see the bottom, not overcooked as far as uh, what some other cookers will do to some almond flour cookies, cookies but uh, thank God for this and I'm going to take a bite of this one. A 
And I'm going to take a bite of this one. Okay, a piece fell off, but they taste good. They turned out decent. So, this cooker is able to do some big baking. Okay, for that bake test, I could have used the drip pan as the cookie sheet, but I didn't. And so now we're just going to move on to the air fry test. And I've got some frozen chicken tenderloins here. I'm going to oil up with some extra light olive oil and season with some lemon pepper seasoning. I've got the wire rack on the lowest level with the bake pan over it to catch drippings. Then I've got the air fryer rack on the middle rack level. So I'm going to let things start warming up while I get things oiled and seasoned up. So hitting air fry, I'm going to leave it at 400 for a time. I don't know, you know, exactly how much I'll need. I'm going to just put it at 20 and see what happens. So we'll let it preheat while I get things ready. All right, preheat is done. I'm going to go ahead and put things in. It'll probably beep periodically until I, until I hit the start button. Things cook for a while. Okay, so 18 minutes of cooking at 400 on air fry. Even the thermopin is going to have a harder time, uh, basically, with very thin cuts of meat like these tenderloins, getting a very accurate read of the temperature, even though it's going to do better than anything else you can find out there for measuring temp. I think we're good. I think we're good. Yeah. Oh, I can't get back there, but I'm going to stop here, hit cancel. I'm going to go ahead and just get these on off. So, let's use the spatula here and get them all on a plate. So you can tell me how you think those look, how they did it with the air fry. This is the back side. Like I said, I didn't do a flip, but that's how your back side looks. So, i going to get the rest of these on off. Alright, so there we go. I'm just going to let them rest for a few minutes. Okay, I just gave the chicken a few minutes to rest, reabsorb juices a little bit. And just going to go ahead and thank God for this and do a taste. Okay, they're moist. They've got some juiciness there, not dried out. So, turned out pretty good on the air fry. Now I want to talk about cleaning the cooker. Basically, you're going to use like a warm soapy rag to wipe things down all over and a damp one to kind of get the soap off. Or don't use anything abrasive or anything that will scratch the surfaces. And uh, they only advise hand washing for cleaning. They don't advise using a dishwasher for anything so um, you know that's basically how you wash the cooker so let's talk about the warranty this cooker comes with a one-year warranty and so basically you get the I guess standard one year that you get from a lot of manufacturers with this cooker so we see that it was able to cook up everything we threw at it doesn't have any pause features so when you got a spin on the bake you uh, have to keep that in mind but it was able to do everything that it was tasked to do. And so, in the video description, there are lots of ways to help the channel, such as my cookbook, merch, membership, donations, all that good stuff. Also, you can always check out my blog, superwaveovenrecipes.com, to find lots of recipes for lots of different cookers. A lot of the recipes are cross-compatible as well. And so, if you did like this video, please do give it a thumbs up, share the video with a friend, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification icon and get eating.